What's good, everybody? Mr. J here, and today, hold up, hold up. What is what is this? Got them Hemi's looking a little roomy, huh? Huh? Hey, this is still Gotham Hemi, just not the Gotham Hemi you used to. So, what happened to Gotham Hemi, the one that you used to? That's a story for another day. Today, we're going to take another look at the Dodge Charger EV. Yes, sir. Now that the smoke has cleared, and oh, yes, there is smoke. Now that the smoke has cleared, the dust has settled from the initial unveiling. Everybody's had time to get the full scope, the full picture of what's going on with the EV for Dodge, the new Charger, Daytona, SRT, blah, 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 Banshee. <laughs> But now that everybody's had their thoughts and got to see, we're seeing a lot of things. These cars are about ready to come out. We're starting to see prices leak. We're starting to see videos of them on the streets. And more importantly, we're seeing flybys. Flybys with that new Fratsonic exhaust. So we're gonna take another look at this Daytona, man, and really digest it see what the future how we're feeling about the future of Dodge moving forward and uh, just kind of revisit this subject now that we're right around the corner from this car releasing so it would seem so if you haven't known we've been seeing a lot of activity on the Dodge Charger as of late we've been seeing the official Dodge posts with the uh, Fratsonic uh, sound chamber exhaust whatever you want to call it and i will say if those leaks are true the msrp on those is not looking very bad it's looking actually pretty decent um but but as we all know in this day and age msrp don't mean a damn thing because as soon as them dealerships get their hands on them they are going to mark the hell out of them up just like we saw with the final edition of the Chrysler 300C just like they do all of the Hellcat scat packs everything you cannot get your hands on anything for the price of MSRP which is criminal absolutely criminal but you know what fools keep on buying the cars fools keep on buying these cars out leasing them driving them for five years getting rid of them absorbing all this debt as long as people continue to do that, guess what? They're gonna continue to mark these drawings up. But that MSRP doesn't look too bad. It's kind of surprising, um, you know, given the, the hyperbole and how everything was going around the car, I figured and, you know, the entry level price of EVs. I was expecting it to be a little bit more. Uh, I was thinking of it was going to start out in the 80s range. It looks like it might be starting in the 60s. Now, I put emphasis on might be. These are leaks, so take that with a grain of salt. That is not a for sure price, especially, like I said, after the dealerships tax on their tax, their markup tax to it. Um, it will not be no 64 grand, but 64 grand is pretty reasonable, I would say. Uh, diving into the exhaust though the 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 mark the key mark that everybody's kind of getting into what are my thoughts on I don't want to call it exhaust is that wrong of me I don't want to call it exhaust because it's not exhaust is an exhale right when you breathe out you are that's that's what exhaust is uh, these things don't have that so it's hundred percent fake it's 100% a speaker. Uh, I want to call it a sound chamber, um, but they're still calling it exhaust. Uh, Fratsonic sound chamber, Fratsonic exhaust. Um, and I think that for me, that, that kind of sums it up in a nutshell. Um, does it sound good? Sure, 
it sounds good. But I think the point that's being missed, and I think the point that has been stressed by many other than myself, is that the is not just sound, right? It's not just sound, it's an experience, it's a feel, right? When that car is making all that noise, you're feeling the rumble under your butt, you're feeling the rumble in the wheel, you're feeling, you're feeling all of that energy as the car is making that noise. Not only that, but most of us in the custom car community, we're not buying cars with exhausts already done. So it's a second experience to, you know, put in the work to get that exhaust, to go get it done. And then, you know, the energy of hearing that, that first, very first startup with your brand new exhaust, it, it's a whole inclusive culmination of experiences that goes on with exhaust. And I don't, believe that it can be captured in just a fratsonic sound chamber. I don't think that that, I think it's disingenuous to what real exhaust is. Does it sound good? Absolutely. Does it sound like real exhaust? Sure. Now, I would have to see it in person. Um, as you watch that video, that clip, keep in mind that, you know, that's being recorded right next to the car on the exterior of the car. So you're hearing the sound basically point blank from where it's being produced from. So how does that carry, you know, half a block away or across the street? Does that resonate the same? I doubt it, um, but I guess we shall see. Um, it, you know, it, it sounds good, sure, but sounding good doesn't take away the fact that it is fake <laughs> um and and sure i'm sure that it's a feature that you know if you had the car and you're able to turn it on and off i'm sure it's a feature that you know you might like to have uh, i'm not shitting on the feature itself um i just think that the concept is a little flawed if I had this car, I don't believe that I would like the exhaust regardless of how it sounds, just because it's a different type of energy. Like, if I'm going to buy an EV car, it's not going to be because the Fratsonic sound chamber sounds so nice. No, that, that's not at all going to be the reason why. You know, I already have my car that has an exhaust that I love. Um, you know, I wouldn't replace it with something that has fake exhaust sounds. I would be driving that car for other reasons. Therefore, I would enjoy that car for other reasons. So for me, I think it's disingenuous to try to embrace this car in a way as if it wasn't something brand new, in a way that, you know, tries to stay familiar to what was compared to what now is. I think it should just embrace being an EV and be the best EV that it can be. The research and development and the time that went into developing this Fratsonic sound chamber, I mean, if you reallocated those resources elsewhere, what else could you have accomplished with this car, right? Maybe it didn't have those speed limits on it that everybody is complaining about uh, you know maybe who knows what who knows what else you could have accomplished without the R&D going into this sound chamber which ultimately I don't believe at all is going to stand the test of time um, I mean if you think about it custom exhausts are supposed to be illegal right now like you know they're, they are supposed to be illegal uh, you know we never get pulled over for them but they are as they stand illegal and I think the argument has always kind of been you know well that's the natural sound of the car that's what a, that's how a car is supposed to sound well now when you're taking a speaker mounting it on the outside of the vehicle I mean the number one reason why custom exhaust gets banned and outlawed is because of noise pollution so you're literally 
taking <laughs> noise and polluting the air with noise that is entirely unnecessary. So beyond the fact that I just don't think that people are going to, you know, uh, like this as, as much as Dodge anticipates, foresees, or hopes, um, I kind of imagine that once people start start uh, customizing these things, making them louder, making them do noises that are other than the stock noises, uh, I would imagine that uh, they're gonna get banned. <laughs> I mean, uh, they're gonna be made illegal. I'm sure that they're gonna get pulled over in a heartbeat if you are, like I said, pumping artificial noise into the air when, you know, you ain't even supposed to have real exhaust. So I don't believe that they will um, stand the test of time. Uh, I believe, shoot, within a couple of years of the model, you know, we will see that disappear. And for reasons, like I said, like, you know, if you didn't spend the R&D on that, what else could you have done it towards, right? So um, it's, I for whoever will like that kind of thing, I'm happy it exists. I'm happy that it exists. I'm happy that it is an option. Um, you know, who knows? Maybe, maybe it'll catch on. Maybe other other companies start doing it and we continue to have loud ass exhaust. We just kind of adjust to it being fake. Um, right now, it's not a, a big deal for me. I, I don't really, I don't really care about it. Despite all the negativity, it does feel and seem like there still is a lot of buzz around this car and you know when it comes down to it we know that these things are going to turn up at car beats we know it <laughs> we know that at some point if for no other reason other than the price point that these are going to carry that they're the new model the newest model the fanciest model all of that for those reasons we're gonna have those guys who got those deep pockets that just show up look what i got only to show up in something else two to three months later saying the same thing look what i got and <laughs> we're gonna see them the question is is how we're gonna react to them when we see them at car meets i know personally i would love to experience one um no plans on on buying one or anything like that but Hell, if I could get a test drive of one, I, I'd probably like to test drive one. If I had a buddy who, who got one, um, you know, I would like to see what this car has to offer, see what it's all about, see what the future is going to be all about. It's still a bit exciting time, I think, for Dodge, even though it does seem like it's a heavy transitional time. Speaking of the brand, it's, uh, you know, we, we've definitely seen the hiccups along the way with these EVs. Uh, there's been a fairly big delay across all of the uh, Mopar umbrella with all of the EVs. Uh, it sounds like definitely the Charger has definitely been pushed back at this point a couple of times. Um, as well as the truck that I definitely wanted to get, the EV Ram. Um, Ram Revolution now was supposed to come out at the beginning of the year. We're now late in the year and it still doesn't have a release date. So there's been several stalls and you know causes for concern with the EVs in terms of you know the Mopar umbrella. Uh, it, I believe the 4xE Jeeps they definitely had their issues that needed to be recalled. Uh, again, Chrysler hasn't done anything, but I think that's you know fairly on brand for Chrysler. Um, they have the van, but that's it. Um, so a lot of cause for concern going around the umbrella right now. We'll have to wait it out and see what happens. So. That's all I got today. Hit me down in the comment sections. Let me know what do you think of the new Charger Daytona. Now that you're seeing some live action shots of it, hearing the Fratsonic sound chamber, all of that, does it change your opinions, your initial opinions of the vehicle? Or are you still on the fence? 
is Dodge finished? Is Mopar finished? Stellantis now taking over. Whatever your comments, whatever your thoughts, let me know down below. And I will see you guys in the next one. I'm Mr. J, and uh, yeah, again, this is still Gotham Hemi. Still a Hemi. Whatever happened to Gotham Hemi you used to see it, stay tuned. We out.